So welcome guys to uh, Brow Edits tutorial number two. I hope you enjoyed the first tutorial I made and uh, just getting to know a little bit about Brow Edit and how to get it installed as well as where to go if you needed uh, an updated revision which comes out every now and then but uh, at least you got a feel of how to get this to work properly. Today we're actually going to get right into the program. We're going to develop our first map which is going to be lots of fun and you'll get to understand uh, the navigational controls and just a little bit about uh, the basic functionality of Browdit. So the first thing we're going to look at is uh, the Browdit interface and navigational controls. Then we're going to take a look at designing your first map. Uh, after that we're going to go into and look at the Browdit editor modes which is going to be used when we're designing our first map. And then finally after our map is done we're going to take a look at saving your map and then opening an existing map which can be the map you just saved as well. Okay, so let's get started. So if you haven't already, let's just open up Browdit. Okay, so I got my Browdit opened. And I just wanna, before I get into this, I want to show you a couple of things. First of all, Browdit comes with two windows if you haven't seen. There's the command window, and then you have the, the actual editor window itself. I want you to pay attention to the command window first of all. Uh, this is actually very important when it comes to uh, doing a bunch of calculations in the maps later on when I show you and also understanding how many objects you have in the map and also when you're loading files. Now loading files is very important because if you're missing any data then they c you could air out, you could have uh, some serious crashes or errors. So the first thing you need to look at is first of all what is your revision? Have you installed the right uh, browted version first of all? Also you need to look right after that is if you've read the actual GRF files, the data and then the rdata.grf. If, if it didn't read properly it will tell you it would say error reading GRF and then you could see whether it could might be your pathway is incorrect or uh, maybe it's a corrupted file, I don't know, but you just gotta check those things. Just check them every now and then, just to make sure that things are looking properly. If you scroll just a little bit down you'll see all your plugins. So like the ones I showed you before that were placed in your plugins folder. The generators, the light maps, the GATs, the clear maps, and the 3ds to rsm.dlls. And you can also take a look at uh, uh, down here you could take a look at the uh, effects to make sure that your effects are in as well as your textures and so uh, that's pretty much what's going to happen so far with the command window also if you did adjust your browted x and y axes for the window size you will see that it has adjusted itself to what you've uh, picked so that's great to, and everything so let's start off with the interface so uh, first of all you can see we have the file options down here don't don't mess around with this stuff right now. You could cause some severe errors. So I just be very careful when you're touching stuff and brought it. I've done it. I've clicked the rebuild texture file before, and uh, it does cause errors. And your there's a file in your brought it that does carry all the textures, uh, texture paths, and that could get really messed up. And your brought it will not start, and it will be a drag to actually uh, find the, re the the replacement file for that, which is your custom textures dot txt. So uh, generate, like I showed you before on the uh, previous video, what product can do is make hills, cave dungeons and mountains, room maze, maze stuff, like pretty much is, yeah, it's pretty much just a maze of rooms. This is down, this down here is used to calculate light maps, so you can actually see your map and bring all the, the color and life into it. View, this is very important when it comes to uh, raising maps and also uh, changing your camera angles and stuff and then if you go to edit modes, I'll talk about this later on when we actually get into designing maps is what the edit modes do are uh, to uh, actually edit is uh, get edits, water edits, object edit to place objects on your maps uh, texture edit is pretty obvious to put textures on your maps so, uh, there's lots of lots of stuff going on here uh, edit mode, this is starting to get into more of the uh, intermediate levels sloping effects is a little bit more uh, uh, complicated and uh, I think the more the most complicated thing to do right now is light maps and sound edit. Sound edit is a little bit buggy. I'll talk to you about that later. It is possible. I've done many maps with sounds, and it works perfectly fine. But in the more ex in the more I say more expert uh, videos from the tutorials that'll be coming up much later on, I'll talk about how to put sounds in and make sure that works properly, and also for effects. Okay, so we have a little bit about the interface here. Now we're going to talk about actually making our first map in the navigation that. So when you make your first map, do not click the new map function. If you click it, it'll ask you for your width, 
and then for your height, and then if you click OK again, it'll, div it'll make the whole map itself. Don't do that. The new map function is, is pretty buggy. I've done it many times. It can cause lots of errors when you're actually uploading it to your servers, so I do not recommend using it. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to open a previous gravity map. So let's say open up down here, if you do not see there's a search bar, we're going to open up a Prontera map, because Prontera I like a lot, and it's pretty good for a uh, general template. So I'm going to use Prontera map, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Field01, let's open up Field01. So click load, or just enter, doesn't matter, and it should load up just like that. Okay? So this is the map itself, and uh, if you just take a look around, first of all, you see these blue grid lines around the, around the colorful texture, so this is your texture right here and these areas down here are sloped regions on terrain so we're going to take a look at how to actually move around the map first of all to do this let's start off with zooming in and out of a map it's actually quite simple just scroll in and scroll out with your inside uh, mouse wheel so if you scroll in the scroll in is when you pull the mouse wheel towards your, uh, towards your hand and to zoom out is away from your hand when you scroll in and scroll out so that's how you do that and then if you want to move around the map a bit, hold right click and then drag. And you could pretty much drag around the map as much as you want. So you get a little feel for that. You can zoom in pretty pretty I don't know, pretty far, but if it has its limits. If you zoom all the way out, you could see the map. This purple region is the void, which is like nothingness. And uh yeah, this or well, I haven't showed you that. If you hold shift, right click and then drag you can actually turn your camera around like that so that's pretty useful and if you zoom in right here this white yellow spot here is a no texture grid meaning there's no texture on it so if you want you can put textures but there's nothing going to be drawn on it it's pretty good when it comes to uh, drawing areas when you don't want light maps on for example if you have a room with a black area around which many gravity maps have and if you have lighting on that it could look pretty bad I'll talk about that later on when we get into the lighting, which is much later on, but uh, it's just something to know about. Also, if you want to uh, turn your camera up towards the sky, it's a little bit more difficult. It's not too bad. Just hold control, then hold shift, then hold right click. I know it's a lot, and then just drag. So you can now kind of neat. You can look from a bird's eye view, or you could just look around a bit on the map itself. So that's just a little bit about moving and navigation around a map okay and uh, also uh, if you want to take a look at the objects in a map it's very easy just click the letter O on your keyboard and then you can see all your objects your map will now get will now get a little bit more edit, uh, leggy just because you have more objects present in the map and your CPU is now going under a little bit more pressure when it comes to calculating all this stuff going on uh, the real legginess is not just from the objects, but also the lighting. To show the lighting in a map, just click L, the letter L. And there you go. You can see all your lighting and all your objects in your map. So if you uh, would like to, what I usually do is I zoom in just to reduce the lagginess or just get rid of the lighting itself. The lighting does put a lot of pressure on your program, but uh, it's not too bad, depending on how big your map is. So that's our, this is just a simple uh, Prontera map. Uh, one thing to notice is do not edit this map and then click save. Do not ever do that because you just then replace the map in your GRF with a new edited version of the gravity map so when you go in game you're going to see something completely different than what other players would see and if you change gat tiles and movements and all that stuff as well it could also be pretty bad on your part because it is server-sided nothing can be changed client-sided which will give you a beneficial factor for example if you want to get somewhere you just make a quick little walk path here or something to get somewhere and it won't work but you will not see the actual uh, walkable plate when you walk around with a little green bar little green box when you walk you will not see that so it can get really confusing just something to know never edit a map and then save it what you should always do first whenever you make a new map is just to open a, a simple map by going open GRF like we just did and then click save as okay so when you click save as you'll see something pop up just like this so what I want you to do is to click this bar right here okay and then just save it on your desktop just for now save it on your desktop okay so now that we're on our desktop let's rename this map to something we want remember to keep the, the length of the map within you know nothing too long you don't want something too long or else it does 
it won't it won't really work at all. Just keep it short form, just like everything. So if we want to call this our first template, let's just call it uh, I don't know. Let's call it first underscore map. That's just what I'm going to do. So click save. Now before we actually before we get into this, you you will see uh, something pop on your pop up on your left on your sorry your uh, desktop. But before we actually get into the map, let me show you what just happened in your command window. So go back to your command window in your uh, about it, and you'll see some something new. You see all this quad tree looking for model, so looking at model, and then right at the bottom, the last line, you'll see 1,244 models written if if you opened the Prontier underscore 01 map. So that just shows you how many models was on the map. And uh, if you see 99.68 percent or whatever is right after quad tree, and you know everything has been saved properly, and then that uh, you're free to close the the program right now. So we're going to have to close our program. So let's close it. Okay. Yeah, are you sure you want to quit? Yes. Just click OK. And that's it. So now, let me show you the files that just appeared on your laptop, on your uh, desktop. I don't know why I keep seeing laptop. I don't know. As you can see, there are actually four files. So the first file, RSW, is your uh, actual terrain level. It's your map itself with all the terrain in it. The GND is what carries light maps. So this one is actually the largest uh, largest file you will find when you design maps, and the RSW is relatively small, but depends on the size of your map. The dot extra file, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Just one second. Let me just get to the GATS. The GATS is your walkable areas, so where a person can walk into or cannot walk into. That's where this is all placed in. Lastly, the dot extra file. This is what contains uh, uh, values for your light maps and also effects uh, values. It so yeah, it, it uh, contains values for uh, all your light maps and your li and when, when you do light maps, you'll find that there are values in some properties and stuff like that. I'll talk about it later in more detail when we actually get to making lights. So uh, you'll understand what I'm trying to say later on. Okay, so we have four four files, but keep in mind the keep in mind that the uh, dot extra file is required when you need to say re-edit a map you just made. Don't ever delete this file. And don't ever give it out to those that uh, that say w if you were to distribute your map just leave the dot extra file out or else they could change your map and do stuff to it that you won't want. Okay? So if you were to, if you were to get out, give it out to a friend or to a server or whatnot just give them these, these three files and that should be fine. So now that you know a little, a little bit about uh, saving uh, your first template. Let's actually open it up. So let's open up this map. So go back to Browdit and uh, start it up. Okay, so we have Browdit up here. We know it's working because we checked it before. And let's go to the file, open, and then I want you to go to your desktop again. Okay, and then just double click on first map dot first underscore map dot rsw or click open. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now that our map is open, this is completely different from the Prontera underscore field one because it's now renamed and uh, it's no longer part of the GRF file, so it's, you can edit this as much as you want. And uh, we can do this as our first map template.